and welcome to another episode of FUBA. In today's episode, we are continuing with our new location service series. And in this episode, we are going to explore the routing feature. Routing is a new feature in location service. It's been announced when it was announced the general availability of this service. And what routing allow us is to basically find the route between point A and point B. Routing has a lot of parameters and is very, very customizable. You can basically find the route now uh, if you're going by car, by walking or even by track. And the cool thing of the track is that you can put the weight and the height and basically tracks cannot get stuck into kind of bridges. So with this routing capability, now we are able to know how to go from A to B. And I want to add that feature in my uh, app, the store apps that I have been working in the previous episode. In the previous episode, what we have built is a simple app where we have a map. It has these little drawings of where the different uh, stores are. So we have drawn in the map based using geofencing and everything is kind of, uh, there's a lot of web involved here. And this is pretty nice, uh, but we want more. We want to add routing capabilities. I want to help a person to go from where they are now, from their house to the store. And for that, I'm going to add a route component where you can input an address and then select one of our stores to go there. And I will show you that route in the map so you know how to get there. If you want to know more about routing and all the capabilities it has, I leave you a link to the documentation in the description box. It's a very a complete API, so you can do a lot of things. I will be just doing a very simple call to the API, assuming that you're going by car and assuming you're departing now when we are going to try this API, but you can do a lot with it. Let's go now to the console and get started. So the first thing we want to do is to go to the location service and create a route calculator. A route calculator will allow us to do these calculations in the route. So we need to create one of those and then put a name. Just pick whatever name, keep it in some clipboard because you're going to need it in a moment. And then pick the provider and keeping with S3, my map is RC and everything we are going to do is S3. So that's what we are going to do. And then I'm going to create this calculator. Then we need to add permissions to our Cognito role, the authenticated role in our application, the one that is kind of giving temporary permissions to our users to access the AWS resources, to be able to access this calculator and calculate uh, roads. So for that, we are going to the role that we opened in the previous episode. So if you don't know how to find this role, go to that uh, video. It it's in the description box and you can uh, see how to find this role. And we are going to create a new inline policy, basically copy pasting the one I provide you in the uh, GitHub repo that is linked below. Remember to put the right region, the right account ID and the right name for your road calculator. Give it a name, any name is good. And then you can save this policy. Before going, now we need to add one more resource to our location um, service. Before we go uh, out of here, we need to add one more resource to our location service, and that's a place index. We want to do a search. We are going to give an address in our road. Uh, we cannot expect that people know their latitude and longitude and the road calculator works with latitude and longitude. Uh, so because our users are inputting an address, we need to use this search place index to transform that address into a latitude and a longitude. So for that, we are creating this uh, search uh, basically, we just create a new place index and we give a name, put it in that clipboard because you are going to need it uh, as well. And we pick one of the providers. I pick S3, pick a pricing plan, and then you're fine to go. I will always go with this request-based usage. This is for testing. 
that's the best pricing plan for this case but if you're going to use this in production read the pricing plan the pricing is a little bit complex for location service but it's the way that it's the most fair so read it and understand what you're paying for so now create the uh, place index and now we can again give permissions to that cognito authenticated role to access the search index and we create another inline policy and we uh, basically the inline policy is in that github repo and we are ready now to go we have the roads and we have the search access now we can go back to our code and install a couple of dependencies that we need we need a form react cook form so we can make a little form to uh, get the from and to and then also i will add um another dependency that is called torf that is a library that will combine with the map.gl to draw these route things and draw more complicated things in the in the screen and, and basically create these lines for us to to roll so it will be doing some translation there knock 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 are you watching are you learning something go and like this video please and let's continue so the first thing we are going to do is to create a routing component that little box that has the to and from and a button that says find my way from this address to this store and this is a simple kind of component that it's using that react hook uh, form for making this processing simple so you can see that there is the uh, the form there and it has an unsubmit and then it has a couple of labels one for each of the inputs and one input a traditional one and then a data uh, list with some options and the options are the ones that are coming from the stores so this is dynamic it's generated i have five stores there should be five elements in this list and then on submit we are going to call this method called find roots that is in our app.js so this component is really doesn't have much logic and we are passing the from and the to Another thing I'm going to create is a pin.js and this is a little SVG uh, drawing of a little pin in the map. So when we are doing to from, we can see where the two is <laughs> uh, selected. So that's just a little thing. And then we can um, add a new folder called helpers. And this is a helpers file that will have three functions that we will use in calculating the roads and doing uh, some things. I could add this in the app.js, yes, but I want to make the app.js as small as possible. So it's not so daunting for you to read it when you get this code. So I decided to add uh, these three functions that we are going to analyze in a second into this helper file to make things easier. And you can reutilize these functions later on as well. So now we go back to our app.js and there I will be starting from wherever we leave it from the previous video and I will add more things. So let's go through the things that I just added. The first thing is uh, the imports. So we have the routing, we have the pin, then we have the helper methods there as well. And then we have this uh, torf that we just installed as well. And then we have a couple of more things in our React map.gl, like layers and markers. We also add a couple of constants, the search index and the route calculator that you have in your clipboard. And then we add a new route layer. And this is basically uh, the one that we have for the shopping centers was a fill. This is a line, it's a green line that will show the way in the map from point A to point B. And uh, you can paint it the color you want. <laughs> Then you will have the routing components that we just created with the find route, and that's the method we need to code. So that find route is a method that has is doing quite a lot of things, so we can go and check it. So basically, it will get the from and to. The first thing we need to do in the find routes is to find the position for the selected store. There is no need to go again to the server because we have all the stores stored in our kind of local. <laughs> we have already got them from the from the query that we did when we load the page. So what we can do now is search that array for because we have the name of the store and we want to find the longitude and latitude. So that's the first thing we want to get is the store. Then we want to get the position 
for that uh, search address. So in the two, in the from, sorry, we are going to write an address and that it's uh, address like, I don't know, um, I, I don't know any uh, famous address, but street name one, two, three, like that's an address. And we want to convert that address into a longitude and a latitude. And for that, we are going to use the search index. So that's one of the helper functions that we have done, the search place, where we need to pass the index name, the client, and the text of the address. So we are calling the uh, AWS SDK with these, um, these values. So every time we use the AWS SDK, there is always the same format, the params that we need to form that uh, you can find the documentation of these APIs in the SDKs. Uh, in this case, it requires the index name and the text of the address. So we have that. And then we can uh, basically call the API search place for index text using the client. And this is something also new that we have created now. I will show you in a moment. This will return a whole shebang and we get the points, basically the latitude and longitude. And what is the client? Well, the client <laughs> is something that we need to create as well when we load the page. And it's using the credentials from Amplify and basically using the AWS SDK to make sure that you can access that. And then basically you can just call that all over again. You don't need to create the client all the time. So when we get that uh, longitude, we can set the viewport to go to that place and also move that uh, pin that we created uh, and put it in that position. So basically we will say, I want to go from this address to this store and the zoom will go to the start of the kind of journey and we'll zoom into that point and a little pin will appear there. So now we want to calculate the route. We have the from address and we have also the to the store. We have the latitude and longitude for both of these things. So now we can calculate the route. And for that, I'm also using one of these helper functions to calculate the route. For that, we need to pass the route calculator, the client, and these two addresses with longitude and latitude. So we go to the helpers and we can see what is done in there. Again, we are using the AWS SDK. So we are creating a params. I need to pass the road calculator and the two positions, the destination and the departure. It's important to include that leg geometry. So then you can draw that in the map because that's what Torf needs to create this feature collection that is going to get them drawn in the map. So include that, that was a mistake I spent quite a long time <laughs> without realizing, so make that true. And then basically we uh, then can call the client and calculate a road for us. Good. And then we grab that road and we pass it to another of the helper functions that is the make leg features that is using Torf to create this feature uh, kind of object that then it's understandable by the MapGL to so draw that in the screen. So that's what we are using here. So good, um, you can copy paste it. This will work for you unless you really know what you're doing. I think this should work. So then we can set that road line that is the basically painted line in the uh, screen. And I also created a variable for it that uh, it's there. And we are going um, to draw that in the map using layers and using also this data layer that we have defined the color and the weight of the line. So we add that in the map as a source. We say, okay, use this road line. That is the one that Torf has configured. Like we got it from the road uh, API as a leg and then Torf have converted into something that this thing can read and we pass it here. And then we pass the layer configuration with this uh, configuration, like the green free weighted line. You can do whatever you want. And that's kind of it for drawing the uh, line. The next thing we want to do is to add a marker in our uh, application. For that, we are going to use the marker and we are going to say that it's the type of pin and basically that will add a red marker into our app. So uh, that's something 
pretty simple and it's using again one of the uh, features of the map gl and if we refresh you can see in the side we have the marker we have in the side the uh, from to form that we created and we can put an address in that form i recommend you to be as specific as you can in the address because how this works is that it will uh, do the reverse search so if there is many addresses that fits that kind of reverse search because of the way we coded this, we are going to the first result. And if the first result is not in this city, then it doesn't work. Uh, so I will uh, recommend you that you put the city name when you're doing the from, and then you will get the exact uh, location that you're looking for. And then in two, there is all the stores, they are already loaded for you, so you just pick one, and then you press the button, find a way, and it will draw plop, the little green light from the two to the, to the place. So that's pretty nice, and you can change the store to something else, longer way, and you can see that it always center in the start. So that's what we defined, so that's good. And then you can follow that to the right uh, store. So this is nice. And again, this is finding the roads based on cars and departing now. And it's not showing any information on the screen. You could put uh, more detailed filters and you can add like you want to go by car, you want to go walking, you can depart now. Uh, you can show how long it will take you, how many kilometers, that's something the API returns and it's very easy to show in screen. So you can basically add that with no problem. So that's it for me for today. I hope you liked this tutorial on routing and we are missing one more video in this series and seeing how to send events in a different way. I already show you how to send events uh, in one particular way in the previous series that I did and I want to show you a different way on sending events. So go and watch it when it's ready. And I see you in the next episode of Ooh, Ciao, ciao!